Right, we're in uh, Munden in Austria, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Andrew McPherson, who's um, Chief Operating Officer for the Great Cup. You don't look like your average Chief, op- Chief Operating Officer. <laughs> no, I, uh, I guess I don't fit the corporate mould, but I guess we had to have a title, so that'll have to do. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so you, you're just going to give us a guided tour to this boat. Obviously, it's a Martin Fisher design. Martin's well known for um, doing his um, F-18 designs, as well as working on uh, the Group Armour, the two last Group Armour trimarans, as well as the Volvo 70. Um, what, what are the sort of Martin Fisher features of this boat? Well, I guess Martin's uh, always been at the leading edge on the F-18s. I think his F-18s, he's done the, the Capricorn, the Wildcat, and then finally the Phantom is the most recent one. And, and we did a lot of... Uh, time with that phantom boat and and this boat here is essentially uh, a big phantom in the way that the hull shape is and then is the wind is picking up um if you look at the 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 way the hull shape and the volume distribution is very similar to to the phantom so we have quite a lot of volume low not a heap of rocker um so it allows the boat to go fast but um but yeah, it's it's quite a, just an evolution of, of everything else that's been going on today. Because they're, they're putting a lot of rocker into the AC seventy two to make them turn corners, aren't they? Yeah, so yeah exactly. That's something we should consider. To us. Well, it, it is, but the fact that we're on the foil that sort of helps with the yeah. I mean, the, having a boat that's foil assisted that helps a lot, and I think the AC guys that they have the same sort of thoughts as well. Yeah. yeah. So just give us a quick idea too. Um, we've got sure. quite a lot. Basically, in looking at the hulls, it looks like the bows are sort of towed in a bit, and the rest of the hull is sort of pretty vertical is that, is that well actually right? the, the 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 hulls are canted Sorry. in okay or well, towed out or which would be yeah yeah, yeah sort of yeah like, like that yeah. Like a, yeah yeah so we have about three degrees on the on the rotation on the hulls okay and so that's actually take the, the when, when the hulls are flying yeah yeah it just keeps the boat more straight in the water gets a, a better flow and it's um it's quite easy to do in the mold we, we have one set of molds for the hulls and then we have a plant for each side that we're building to keep the the beams at the right angle we just drop that into place and, and off you go but it's um it makes the boat look a little bit more aggressive too i like that yeah. sure yeah. and the bows are um they're, they're, you've obviously got the kind of reverse sort of dreadnought sort of bows yeah um, but it looks like there's a bit more going on there yeah <laughs> we put this little notch on the on the bow um and uh, it helps when you have a little bit of surface tension running up the up the bow in the lighter weather you'll have a, like a, a thin film of water running up the bow and you want to get rid of it at some point so we put the little notch in there to, to flick it off. So it's a micro chine. Yeah it is a little micro chine. We used to, I mean the Wildcat that Martin did had a chine on it and the Phantom has a very small one just to separate the water off the hull and, and this boat we actually it's quite hard to see from the naked eye but it actually does at a certain point when, the, when we want to get rid of the volume we pull it in quite hard and uh, it sort of softens it a little bit once you've painted it, but there is a, a quite a hard turn in at that point. Yeah, it's a very complex hull shape, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, a lot of dimensions to it once you look down at it. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, let's move back a bit, shall yeah, we? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> okay, so you've basically got sort of standard two cross beams and they just screw into the, the, the yeah. hulls? Yeah, proper beach cat style, you know, we, we wanted to keep it really simple. Um, so it's just four bolts per beam and uh, the beam itself is shaped a little bit, um, it's a bit wedge shaped, so we have uh, the tighter you go into the hull, then the tighter the beam gets in the hull. And then we have this A-frame piece here so that all the torsion from the bolt going down is transferred into these bottom corners here, and then obviously the wedge shape. So the whole thing just gets tighter and tighter in the hull, and we chock fast the, the beams into the hull once we've, we've lined them up. And that basically makes the whole platform super, super stiff. All right, so we'll, we'll talk about these puppies in a minute. <laughs> um, but let's, and you've obviously got the sort of central structure going around down the middle, which is like uh, we see on the D35s and the AC boats and stuff yeah. like that. Just to talk us through what, what's going on there. Well, it's, it's just the best solution for handling the rig loads. So um, if you look at, say, the AC45s and the, and the D35s, they have like a continuous, or well, the D35s a hull sort of thing hanging, but the AC45s have like a, a spine that starts at the back and continues all the way through. But if you do that, it gets quite tricky to have a self-tacking jib. And also for shipping the thing in a container, it's a little bit tricky for us because then our boat would be longer than 12 metres. So um, we decided, you know, for a number of reasons to, to make it discontinuous. It makes the engineering a little bit trickier, but um, but as a as an ownership thing and, and ease of transport, it's much, much better. 
So the spine is discontinuous at the front beam and it mounts into little uh, cups or receptacles on each side of the beam and then the whole rig load is, is pulling the whole thing together. Yeah. And the, the, what do you call that off oh, the middle beam in the middle? The, the, well, the, one, the, uh, little, the little one yeah. is the aft spine and then the, the spine. front we call the right. forward spine. Oh, yeah. right. spine, okay. Yeah. And the aft spine appears to sort of attach to the back beam underneath it, yeah. whereas I would expect it to sort of attach on the front of the back beam. Yeah, but the, most of the load is actually downwards. Yeah. So if you attach it in a, you have to actually plug it in one way and then have the other way so it can swing into place. Unless you wanted to try and put the whole load together at once, you know, like load, like line the back beam up and the spine and drop it all in place, which is a logistic nightmare. So taking into account that most of the force is downwards, then it makes sense to attach it to the bottom of the beam. And obviously you've got a, a Southern Spurs rig, single spreader, rotating wing mast. Yeah, really. Anything, anything so special about that? No, it's, um, it's, it's quite a big wing section for the size of boat. So <laughs> it's, it's a 320 by 140 as a, a wing section. So it's quite large for a 32 foot boat. Yeah. And it's very stiff. We wanted to have something that we could maintain luff tension, say with the Code Zero or the Kites, because you're running quite you know, high apparent. So you needed to have something that was going to be able to deal with that. And Southerns have just engineered it. It's a two-piece mast that comes apart really quickly and easily. The joint is uh, just above the spreader, so you can see it there. Sort of fit up. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So we have the joint there, and it just pops apart. It's the regatta splice system that Southerns have, so it's quite neat. And, and we have, uh, on our boat now, we've actually gone to discontinuous halyards. So we have a, when the mast is apart, we just have the halyards split apart at the at this joint in the mast because everything's on a lock, so it's really easy. You just pull the halyards apart at that point, tie them off, there's a little plug that fits in the end of the mast to line everything up. So then when you come to put the mast back together again, you push them together, tie them all together again, plugs out, and uh, off you go. That's a good Yeah. Yeah, so and reducing the rigging time was a big thing for us. We really, yeah. you know, we used what have to- you got it, What have you got it down to now? I can do it in uh, three and a half, four hours. From trailer to ready to go in the water. Very good, isn't it? So and you, launch, you, I mean, obviously you've got a, a crane here, but the, yeah. the possibility of, of yeah um, ramp launch, launching. Ramp launching. Yeah, it's no problem. We yeah. in Dubai we have quite a really big ramp there. Actually, it's really easy, and the water's warm, so you don't mind getting wet. Yeah, sure. But uh, yeah, we just push it down the ramp. And what's the rigging on this? This is EC6, is it? Or? Uh, no, the the spine rigging is all EC6. Yeah. So the stuff under the boat, um, and uh, that's really nice stuff actually. Um, and then all the standing rigging is uh, from uh, Easy Rigging. Oh, yeah. So it's PBO, four stay, and uh, diamonds. And actually, the side stays we wear armament. So you got the complete kind of catalogue on board this boat? Yeah. Yeah, we just wanted to pick the best suppliers for the best job. I mean, it was. And everyone that we've worked with that's been really good to work with, and, and they're all enthusiastic about it as well. So that the right guys to work with. Yeah. Um, so just tell us a bit about the sails on board the boat. Yeah, so it's a mainsail jib and a jenica. The mainsail and jib at the moment is uh, open to any sailmaker. We have a measurement rule which is essentially on the, the batten position and length. So that's how we control the sail size. Uh, the jenica for this season we're supplying via north sails because we did some testing with different shapes and we found some really radical VMG differences across the course. So we thought, nah, to keep the racing interesting for the first year, let's limit that. Um, we're also uh, looking at putting a, a Code Zero type sail on as well for the lake races and, uh, and we're working that at the moment and that'll, at the moment that's a north sail thing as well. That's going to be a big job, I take it. I mean, a big yeah. sail. Yeah, it'll be 50, no, not so big, it's 55 no? square metres, so it's sheets to the front beam. So you can carry it upwind in the light. So Essentially, your your jib is 25 square meters, and the code zero will be 55, and the Jenica is now 95. Okay. So it splits them up quite nicely, and and I think it should work really well on the the lakes. But regularly, we'll just have three sails on board. Yeah, one does like course racing sort of stuff. Then we'll just run the three. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so, what, what uh, at the moment, what sails have we got? So you've got the 3DI, I believe. Yeah, we? we're 3DI on yeah. our on our boats, so. and uh, and Flavio here has Europe sails. Right. And uh, and then uh, the other AEZ guys um, from Austria, they're currently running a set of one sales. Oh, right. So you've yeah. really got everyone involved. So yeah, far. everyone's yeah. involved, and I think that's great. You know, because it, it keeps the class moving. We control the number of sales you buy. You can't buy ten sets of sales it's, at the moment. It's one set for the year. And uh, and if, if we can, you know, I like to keep the the sale makers interested, and it keeps the class moving forward. Yeah, sure. Yeah.
Okay, we we'll had to get onto it at some point. Let's talk foils. Yeah. So obviously the, the radical thing about this boat is the fact that you've got the S-shaped foils for the main lifting dag- dagger yeah. walls, and you've got the L-shaped rudders uh, at the back there. Yeah. So just to explain how, how the, the idea behind the, how does an S-shaped foil work? Well, the the cool thing with it's essentially what we call it a double S because it sort of yeah. kicks back again in the in the bottom and the top, and it, our foil is is actually completely symmetrical. All we do is we have a different top and bottom, and you can see here there's a small join. So the mould is carbon, and then we have an aluminium insert that goes in at this point, and you can swip, switch the top and the bottom around. We make the top bigger and fatter because you don't want to have a really sharp uh, top on the on the board. So, uh, but the board basically, the, the higher you have the board, oh, sorry, as it goes in, it's quite vertical now because it's at the, the main axis point is actually high and then as it goes down a little bit deeper then it starts to kick inwards and then when you go all the way down it, it straightens up again as far as what you see through the hull so it's um, so up in practice upwind do you have it partially a little bit down upwind you have it almost all the way down but do you, okay. yeah because you want maximum right? depending on the wind strength if it's really windy then you start to lift it up but the neat feature is that no matter where you have the board you always have a little bit at the bottom that's actually quite vertical, so you you maintain your leeway resistance, yeah. but you can adjust the amount of lift that you have yeah, from the board. So basically, uh, so upwind, you basically have the thing all the way down, and it's got a sort of vertical bit. It's got a kink in it, then another yeah. vertical bit. Exactly. That's yeah. Right. yeah. And then you bring it up a bit. Yeah, and then it just rotates around the the middle of the board through the bottom bearing, yeah. and that just kicks the the board inwards which increases the dihedral angle to somewhere around 40 degrees all right so it's uh, the bottom the bit which was vertical at the bottom suddenly becomes like that yeah it's the, bo- the bottom bit still relatively vertical yeah. it just rotates a little bit in the middle section yeah so, <clears throat> so that way you also get this sort of automatic ride type thing so that yeah basically if it gets up too high it turns to vertical for, um, yeah exactly so and you lose like lift yeah. yeah yeah once you start to as the hull starts to come uh, lighter in the water then you start to reduce the lift at that point and then it just settles itself down yeah. if you look at a like a normal c-shaped foil then the, the best lifting surface is actually deep in the water yeah. and it will keep lifting until it's out yeah. and this one lifts until it's out it just happens to be it's out when the hull's just at the, at the surface yeah, yeah so and the other thing about this boat is as you mentioned the, the foils are uh, symmetric rather than asymmetric which yep. is, is what they've got on the ac45s yeah they've got symmetric boards on the extreme 40s yep. um and like the extreme forces you basically get these boards down or, or you, you move them up and um you don't basically lift them no. when you're going to, you don't lift the weather no because and, and this was uh, it's kind of funny because the ac guys ended up going down a development path because of a rule yeah. that stops what we do so we can actually change the rake on our windward foil to allow us to increase the riding moment, which was the big concern with the AC-72s. If they could wind more and more riding moment into the boat, then the loads go up massively. And our boat, essentially, we can, at about 13 knots of boat speed going upwind, if we push the, this daggerboard forward yeah. so we can rake it, like, it goes fore and aft. Yeah. It's a little bit high. I'll just drop it down, and then you can see how it moves. Yeah. Right, so just okay, so you're just showing it. Uh, that's quite significant, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite a big change. So you can go to um, it's plus or minus three degrees. Right. Now the board's forward, it's it start, it's actually pulling down, and you can actually have up to 80 kilos of, uh, of downward force from the foil, and then it comes back to say a neutral position, and then back here it's it's in lifting. Yeah, and we just control that with the with the dagger board. But presumably the only thing you ever want us to do is to poke the bow out, isn't it? Well, yeah, but the, the tricky thing is upwind. Yeah. You can let the if you go forward with this and it's pulling down, yeah. you increase the riding moment, and yeah. you you it's like having an extra. Oh, guy sorry. On, okay, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. You get an extra guy on the rail on, on the weather side. Yeah. So basically, so the, basically the novel thing about this boat is that you're, you're actually using the weather foil to. Yeah, to pull. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we use it really a lot. Like yeah. yesterday, everybody was working the foil backwards and forwards yeah, a lot. Yeah. So when you're marginal hull flying conditions, upwind, you pull it back, yeah. and it starts to pop the windward hull up a bit. And then as you start to fly hull, you go to neutral, and then you push it forward to pull back down again. So you can trim the boat 
hide the, the hull flying with the foil. Yeah. And it's immediately noticeable on the helm. You feel the boat accelerate and decelerate with what you're doing on the foil. And I think that's the first boat, this, this is the first boat to do that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a really neat feature. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously the great thing is then downwind you just go full right back yeah. and then you've got heaps of lift. You know, the boats, the bows are completely up and the boat's very, very stable. And I, I imagine the sailors have taken quite a while to get their heads around how to use this. Yeah, there's, I have a lot of discussions with all the guys, all the teams. They all want to know how it's working and what's best. And, yeah. and luckily we have Martin Fisher coming tomorrow, so I'm sure he's going to get cornered in the VIP tent for a few hours. He's going to lecture him how to use the Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, you trialled this on an F-18, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah so we had the... Actually, Frank Camas has the boat now, and they're wow. continuing with the C-Class development with that exact boat. So we might possibly expect to see something <clears throat> vaguely similar with his... Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> you see, class. <laughs> Good. Um, so, just uh, tell us what's going on with the rudder here. So, basically, so, you've got an L-shaped rudder. Yeah, it's a it's an L-shaped rudder that uh, it's again symmetrical in in its shape yeah. with an L, and uh, we change the ride height of the rudder, so it's completely adjustable in the the height that you have, so the amount of foil you have in the water. So, we've been playing with that a lot, and everyone's uh, you can change the the weight in the helm quite a lot with this system. Um, you can also see. On the side, we have the the rudder pivot point because obviously you have a dagger rudder. You need to have it balanced in some way. So actually, the, the pickup point for the the rudder is is actually on this on the side. So it's the whole blade itself is pre-balanced. So you have a fingertip control on the rudders, so even though there's quite a lot going on with them. Um, so you play with the height. The blade itself is balanced, and then you can control the the rake of the foil. Yeah. Can you just show us how that works? So we have a, it's hinged in a plate inside a, a box, like a false transom inside here. And then we have this whole plate here, which is, it has a hinge on the bottom, a hinge in the top here, and a sliding plate through underneath the deck here. And then we have this row of holes here, and they're all sort of a little bit of a diagonal here. And each hole that you move forward or aft is about 0.2 of a degree change on the horizontal section in the foil. So if I just pull this pin up, I can then change the... Okay, so just move that pull around. Just, yeah, so that like doesn't look like very much, but I imagine on a rudder, that, that kind of it's, thing it's, is, is massive, normal. Yeah. If, every hole, so every point two of a degree, you feel straight away. And you notice it on the pitch on the boat, it changes the, the bow up or down attitude, changes dramatically with, with one or two holes. Yeah. yeah. So you need to go for the moth style twist grip, really, don't you? Well... Yeah, but the boat seems to be quite yeah. happy once you set it up for a condition and you pin it and that's it, it's all good. Yeah. So how do you actually use all this then? So I mean, you can also... <laughs> have you worked that bit out yet? <laughs> yeah, we, we have actually. We started out sailing, because obviously the safest mode is to have the transom pulled into the water a little bit, because yeah. then you're never going to pitch pole. So we find that when it's really windy, then we go transom in a bit. And when you want to get the transom up a bit and, and try and lift the boat out of the water, then you can change it so that you're lifting on the transom a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of how deep you have, how much foil you have in the water, that's purely just a wind speed thing, is it? Yeah, it's, it's uh, how much grip you need. You yeah, know? I see. So basically it's, light, you have a lot. And yeah, exactly. You, whip it up. you start pulling it up a bit. And then when it gets really windy again and the boat's a little bit out of the water in a transom, then you might want a bit more in yeah. just to maintain control. Yeah, sure. But a, the lift is a little bit shared between the two points because the dagger board is quite far forward yeah. on the platform. And so then there is some side loading on the rudder. So it is also assisting with your, your lee weight. Yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's good. Now, um, I think a lot of people are expecting to see this boat airborne at this point. Where, where, where do we stand with that? Well, it's a it's a tricky thing because if you need a boat to to fly, say in San Francisco in 20 knots every day, yeah. that's no problem. You can design a set of foils for that, and it'll fly all the time. Yeah. The issue is that when you're sailing, say in a situation like here, where we have variable conditions, um, you need an all-round boat. And the price you pay for having a big L on the bottom of a, of a foil when you're not flying a hull is a really big price. So the boat comes up out of the water, but as far as being able to you know, reach underneath it, and that. that's, that's not really the, the objective of it. Yeah. So basically, I mean, these, these foils are there just... But well, obviously the main thing, message to get across is yeah. that it's pulling the weather float down. Yeah. Um, but it's also, it is obviously providing a lot of lift as well. Oh yeah, the whole, you can have the whole boat weight totally on the foil. Yeah but it won't lift it clear yeah, of the water sure. because it's a self-regulating height. Yeah, so sure. the hull, where that lifting surface is, is directly under the hull. Yeah. As soon as it comes out of the water, you lose lift. Yeah. 
and that's the whole idea. No, sure, yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, it works eventually, and it does pick up speed when you can feel it lifting. Yeah, yeah, dramatic. Yeah, it's dramatic. Um, so we're on the, on board now. Um, just tell us what's going on. There's some quite cool things going on on this yeah, okay. central spine. Yeah. So, like, I mean, basically, we have the main sheet system is all at the back here. It's a little bit like a beach cat system. <laughs> You know, it's just a six to one purchase at the back. And that and goes it, forward. Yeah, it leads forward and then, and then leads out to the winches. So yeah. it's. Um, so it goes forward to the mid down here. Yeah, coming down here. And then lead it out to the to the primary, to the main sheet winches, and, yeah. and you're done. Right, and the cool. traveller system is also a pretty funky one. We, uh, I always hated having systems floating around on boats, so I put the. the traveller system we put inside the beam. So, so that goes down there. Yeah, so it's windward sheeting. Or well, windward traveller, you can you can pull it to windward as far as you want, yeah. and then it lives inside the beam with a five to one purchase, uh, and then it exits at the base of the beam here. So it comes out, then. Yeah. so it turns into an orange line. Yeah, it turns magically into an orange line, <laughs> and then uh, and then we split it here at the same point as the where the main sheet splits off. Yeah. Yeah. So wandering back up the beam, then you have the. Um, Board in the middle here. Yeah, these are the up and down for the boards. Yeah. So you have uh, one is up and one is down, and you can just you pull one and then you pull the other. So yeah, that's pulling the boat board down, and this one. So so that's up and that's down. Yeah, this one now is up. Okay, cool. Yeah. And up she goes. Cool. But you have to have them both cleated. Oh, right. Otherwise, yeah. things can go wrong because <laughs> it's pulling down. Like it would, it, the board wants to go up or down. It you know, it never wants to stay in the same place. Yeah. And then the mast is pretty standard stuff. You got the mast spanner. Yeah, normal rotation. We did some pretty cool things that we took off the off the F18, for example, where the the diamonds come down here, and then they come down into the one plate, and we have a single bolt as the diamond adjuster underneath. So you can actually just wind the diamond tension on or off with one spanner, which actually fits in underneath the, the mast base. I see. I think these, these, that's one of the most impressive use of dog bones I think I've ever seen. <laughs> That's, that's a Thai Alaska dog bone, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Thai Alaska dog bone. And I think they're quite new from them, and, and we've been trying to use them wherever we can because they're really neat things. And the great thing here is that we can now just drop the, when we pull the rig apart, we drop the dog bone off, and then the, the stays are free, and then it's all easy to pack away. Cool. We're even now using it on the four stay. So we, the four stay, we have a, a loop with a dog bone on one side of the pin, and it comes out, and we can have two different loops on the four stay, so you can change the rake on the mast. Okay, cool. yeah. normally rake back quite a bit. Uh, we're pretty forward on the lake. So oh, yeah. We all go a little bit forward for the lake. Yeah, that's nice. Like, so carbon track. Yeah, it's all integral on the on the mast. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's very saffron. Yeah, mm. they, and it's nice. They do a nice finish on it too. I like yeah. it. And then obviously the jib Cunningham is living here inside the, the forward spine. Okay, so what's that one? What's it? What's it's a 12 to 1, I think. Is it? Yeah, so it just runs out. And then obviously all the halyards are on locks. So we yeah. have the internal southerns locks for yeah. the main and the and the jib. And at the moment we're running the Jenny because just on a normal halyard with a clutch and a tack line. So yeah. we, um, we're still trying to sort a solution there for a, a, a lock that can be on and off really fast for a short course racing. Sure. And with the Jennicas, you pull them. You actually, you, you don't leave them like this. You pull them out. Um, you mean so when you, we're, you, when pull, we're you pull them out to the end of the bar? No, we leave them out when we're you racing. You leave yeah. it. You leave it out there, but loose on the tack line. Yeah. And then you free hoist to the top. Mm -hmm. No winch, nothing, because it's not that heavy. Yeah. And then you get to your mark on the halyard, and then you set up the tack line, and then just finish off the the luff yeah. tension that way. Yeah. You yeah. sell that to Adam, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Angie, thanks very much for your time on this amazing boat. Yeah, anytime.